around the world. Welcome to Real Talk on this year's Sunday evening. Uh, glory to God. We just want to give God praise on tonight. Yes, wherever you are. Uh, how excellent is our God in all the earth? Uh, is he the center of your life? Ah, uh, yes. It's always been him. Jesus, nothing else. Nothing matters. Ah, uh, glory to God. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus is the, he is the center. Everything revolves around Jesus. Uh, nothing matters, nothing else. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, yes, Sister Thomas from St. Kitts. Welcome, welcome. St. Kitts is in the house. Uh, grace and peace be unto you. Yes, from uh, to the heavens. Uh, we do open chest that Jesus is uh, the center of everything for you. Uh, and it's all about him tonight. To the Jesus, oh yes, it's all about him tonight, from my heart, Jesus is, it's all, ah uh, yes, it's all about him tonight. Uh, yes, we just want to give him praise this evening. Glory to God. Uh, yes, hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We magnify him and we glorify him because he is great and greatly to be praised, worthy to be exalted, worthy to be lifted up, worthy to be magnified. Glory to God. When we think about uh, the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us, our soul cries out, Thank you, Lord, for saving. Thank you for delivering. Uh, thank you for setting us free on today. Uh, bless the Lord. Just give me a minute as I do a few things quickly. Uh, we give God thanks. Hallelujah. Uh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I do open trust all is well with you and your family on this evening and that you had a wonderful day. Glory to God. It is indeed the day that which the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, glory to God. For when we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us, our soul cries out, thank you, Lord, uh, for saving. Thank you for delivering. Uh, thank you for setting us free. Glory to God, uh, because indeed we are free. Uh, whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Uh, so we just want to give God some praise tonight. Uh, we just want to bless his name tonight. We just want to glorify him tonight. Uh, there is none like him. No one could compare uh, themselves to him. He is great and greatly to be praised, worthy to be lifted up, worthy to be magnified. Uh, glory to God, worthy to be exalted. For when we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us, our soul cries out, thank you, Lord, uh, for saving. And before we read our scripture and our opening prayer, I just want to bless us with a little bit of this song. As it will speak into. You're not a good part of my life, but my everything. Your love reaches way down deep within. Hasn't you an understanding? There will always be a song for you. I sing. 
Yes, let's sing hallelujah to our King. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are great, almighty, and all honor. To you, O King, hallelujah to our King. Come on, somebody, just give God some praise. Uh, yes, it is Sunday. It is Word Day in the house here on Real Talk, and we just want to give God some praise. Uh, yes, he is great. He is the almighty God. And all honor, all honor to you, O King. Yes, honor to the King of Kings, uh, which is the highest praise. We just want to praise him tonight. Uh, yes, we want to exalt him tonight. We want to magnify him tonight. Uh, we want to sing unto the Lord tonight, for he is great. Uh, yes, he is a great God. He is the almighty God. And all honor to you, O King. Come on, somebody, let's worship the Lord. Uh, yes, he deserves it. He deserves it. Uh, yes, he is worthy to be praised, worthy to be exalted, worthy to be magnified and to be glorified. Hallelujah. Uh, we bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah to the King tonight. Hallelujah to the King. Come on, somebody, wherever you are tonight, under the sound of my voice, open your mouth and give God some praise. Open your mouth and magnify the Lord. Glory to God. Let us exalt his name together. Mighty God, when we think about the goodness of Jesus, when we roll back the curtains of memories now and then, and we look and we see where he's brought us from, truly tonight, truly today, uh, we can say, if it had not been for the Lord. Glory to God. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be on tonight? Where would we be if he didn't love us? Where would we be uh, if he didn't care for us? Where would we be if he didn't sacrifice his life for us? And we are so glad at tonight that he did. Uh, we're thanking him for the blood. We're thanking him uh, for the Holy Spirit. We're thanking him that he is the giver of our lives and the sustainer of it. Oh, glory to God. We're thanking him tonight that he is our redeemer. We're thanking him tonight that he is our way maker. He is our miracle working God. And we just want to lift our voice. How excellent is our God in all the earth. There is none like him. No one could compare themselves to him. He is God all by himself. He is God alone. From before time began, he sat upon his throne and he ruled and he reigned throughout all eternity. Uh, so we bless on him tonight. We want to love on him tonight. We want to let him know how much we appreciate him tonight. We appreciate him as our good shepherd. We appreciate him as our redeemer and king. We appreciate him as our Lord. We appreciate him as a true vine. Glory to God. We appreciate him as our healer. Oh, my to God as our comforter. Uh, there is so much we give him thanks for tonight. Uh, yes, the fact that you're still amongst the living. Uh, yes, the last Sunday in the month of August, uh, mighty God, and you're still here. 
Just think about how many persons have passed on, glory to God. Uh, you know, we just got word of a good colleague of ours. Her sister passed away. She's no more. She's not amongst the living anymore, but you are amongst the living. So you have uh, the ability to open your mouth and give God thanks. Not open your mouth to complain, uh, not open your mouth to murmur, uh, glory to God, but to give God thanks. Uh, the Bible says whatever situation we find ourselves, ourselves in. We ought to give him thanks because he is in control of all things. Uh, so we just want to bless him tonight. Uh, for those of you who are watching us for the first time, my name is Vivian. I am the host of Real Talk. Uh, with me tonight, I have um, Evangelist um, Michelle from out of Kids Saying Kids. And I want to also say Evangelist Rakim. Yes, mighty man of valor uh, out of St. Kids. So can St. Kitts is in the house tonight. Uh, glory to God being represented well. I want to just send greetings for those of you on chat. I see that, um, uh, you know, there's some person from St. Kitts here. Uh, good night also to, um, you know, Minister Andre Roden. We bless the name of the Lord. Okay, Minister Roden, I am going to um, uh, give you the Zoom ID. Join us, man of God. It would be nice to have you on. Uh, glory to God. Yes, I will definitely... Uh, put it in the chat and you can join us, uh, Minister Roden. Uh, glory to God. I would love to have you on as we talk about what we've been talking about this weekend with the conference, crack but not broken. Uh, glory to God. So again, um, we want to bless the Lord. Uh, Brother Rakeem, before we go any further, I want you to just open us up in prayer with our scripture reading, and then we will take it from there. Good night, viewers. Real talk and those that are here on the live, but night evangelist Michelle. And I just want to say, God is good to us all the time, and we can't do nothing without Him. And it's a privilege to be here again amongst the people of God, the real people of God that put heart from the heart. And don't be afraid because God is not a God to fear. God is a God that loves us, God is a God that appreciates us in spite of the wrong that we do. And I just here tonight to just help somebody and to encourage somebody tonight to don't give up. This, I'm going to read a scripture here and I'm going to pray. And the opening scripture is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6 to 7. Here, begin at the scripture reading. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen, earthen vessel, vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He ended the scripture reading and I'm going to say a prayer to God to open us up. O most righteous and heavenly Father, I come to you tonight, O God, not of flesh, but of the spirit, O oh God. Lead me the way that you want to lead me, O oh God. I'm so happy to be a part of your kingdom, O oh God, and I'm very deeply appreciated by you, O oh God, and I know that you have chosen me at such a time like this, O oh God, to do your work boldly, O oh God, and not be afraid, O oh God. I ask of you, Lord, that you have your way tonight on this platform, O oh God, that people may come, oh God, not only come, oh God, but their life may be changed, renewed, and healed, and they shall be delivered from all the plans of the enemy. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, oh God, I just want to thank you tonight, oh God, for everything that you've done for us, oh God. For we are your vessels, oh God, ready to be used, oh God. But only if we surrender our life to you, oh God, then you will come into our hearts, oh God, and then you will wash us, then you will purify us, oh God. And then you, you will make our hearts your home, O oh God, to dwell, O oh God. I thank you, O oh Holy Spirit, tonight for giving us another opportunity to live, O oh God. 
for so many has passed on, oh God, but we are still here. We appreciate you tonight, oh God. We love upon you tonight, oh God. Let this program and let this word that we are about to speak, oh God, and let whatever we say be among you, oh God. Let it be of you, oh God. Let thy will be done, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome to each and every one of you. Uh, glory to God, wherever you are around the world. I just want to say uh, good night to those of you down there in Lagos, Jonathan and your family. Uh, good night to our viewers uh, that are in Jamaica, the United States, Canada, um, St. Kitts. Please let us know uh, where you're viewing us from. Glory to God. Again, my name is Vivian. I'm the host of Real Talk. And tonight has been... Uh, word night on Real Talk, where we come on, uh, not, every, not every Sunday, but every other Sunday, we come with a word of encouragement. If ever time we need to be encouraged now, if ever time uh, persons are looking for comfort, it is now, and we can find that in the word of God. We can find encouragement in the word of God. So tonight, uh, we're here to break bread, uh, yes, to feast at the Lord's table, uh, glory to God. So we just want to thank God. We just want to bless God, uh, yes, for allowing us to be in your midst tonight. Uh, yes, for those of you, I want to publicly say thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who um, were on in the, um, when we were on the crusade, uh, I should say the conference, uh, Eagles Wings uh, Ministries, um, it was their conference, but I was just helping them and hosting it on our page. So I thank our supporters. I thank those of you who listened and i'm sure you were blessed it was a powerful two days of of, of word uh glory to god crack but not broken we bless the name of the lord so we just want to again celebrate with the founder and leader um pastor letla thompson uh on her uh adventure and may god continue to guide her steps as she goes on so we are back to our regular program now here on real talk and we are going to be running with uh the same topic uh, as we end off the last Sunday in the month. And why am I doing that? I remember, uh, I'm a person like this. When I hear a word, uh, I like to run with it. When you go somewhere, you're fed with the word and it blesses you. You want to bless somebody else. Glory to God. Good night, Minister Gordon. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yes, uh, glory to God. Um, as we continue, uh, yes, let all protocols be established. So tonight, uh, we're going to talk about crack but not broken. But I asked a question yesterday in the chat. What do you do if God is the one that made that crack? Glory to God. What do you do? Just like I've been talking with my series, what do you do when God is the one that's hit that pause button? Uh, yes, you're watching the movie, your life is going, but the pause button was hit, not by the enemy, but by God. So I'm turning it around. The woman of God is going to come, uh, yes, and she's going to deliver the word, but I want to pose, and we're going to go into this, and, and I just want to welcome uh, Minister Andre, uh, yes, uh, my in-law, uh, yes, uh, glory to God, uh, my son-in-law's brother, so he's family, uh, he's coming to us from out of um, Florida, uh, glory to God, welcome man of God, we're going to give an opportunity as well, uh, you know, to, to talk to us about crack and, you know, what your views on it and then, so this is going to be a night that we really discuss um, the word, and also turning it and says, what if God did the crack, yeah, we're going to talk about it tonight. So without no further ado, I want to release the woman of God to us tonight. Uh, she's no stranger, actually, to the Real Talk platform. Actually, she's now a part of our, um, what would you say, our, our team here. Uh, going into our new season of September, you'll see her quite often on Wednesdays. Uh, yes, with me. And every now and then on our uh, Let's Talk with Vivian. God is doing a new thing. And then I also have uh, Minister Rakeem, Evangelist Rakeem. Uh, you know, he said to me, Minister Nash, you know, I was shy at one time. I said, you could have fooled me. Uh, so, you know, God is sending help. Let me tell you something. When you pray for help, God will send help. Uh, glory to God. So I thank God for uh, Pastor Redeem and the Jumpstart and Minister Gordon, because this is how I was able to meet these wonderful people of God and also put them to work. Uh, glory to God. So again, we want to thank God. You see, one of the things that we have to understand, our giftings is for the kingdom use. Uh, yes, you know what I mean? So this is what 
what we want to do. Uh, glory to God. So again, I released um, Evangelist into your hands. You'll hear her. And then after her, I'll come back and then we'll hear from uh, the man of God, um, Andre. We have a man on. So it'd be nice. To, people thought the conference was just about women, but you have men that are cracked too. Uh, you understand? Yes, you have some cracked men out there. Uh, glory to God. So it'll be nice to hear from a man, a male's point of view as well. So um, I release you, um, evangelist, in the care of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, woman of God. Good night again, Minister Lash. God night, Brother Rakim and Brother Andre. God night to everyone in chat. I am Michelle Hanley out of St. Saint, Saint Kitts, a humble servant of the living God. The scripture that I chose is Romans 3 and verse 23. You might ask me, why she choose that? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have cracks and come short of the glory of God. For all have faults and come short of the glory of God. For all have errors and come short of the glory of God. For all have situations and come short of the glory of God. For all have shortcomings and come short of the glory of God. There is one person who hasn't had even a split, and that is Christ. He is faultless. He is blameless. He is spotless. And when I heard this word, I said to Minister Nash, we got to run with this word, you know, because right there and then, when it's a cracked, but not broken, when you have to search yourself, you know, there are things in you. There are your cracks. Many may not understand it, but it's not for them to understand. Your crack is your testimony in the making. Your crack is your errors, your flaws, your faults, your situations, your shortcomings. Your crack, you can become a recycled treasure. It has the same value or higher than its original state. Cracked, but still have it together because there is something deep down that is holding you together. You are cracked, but you still have purpose. You are cracked, but you still have use. Don't feel left out. You are cracked, but you are not garbage. It is a situation for God to move for him to show that he is God and he can take nothing and make something out of it. He can take mess and create it into a message. He can take your tests, your quacks, and cause them to be testimonies. You are still usable to create something peculiar. The word of God said you are peculiar. He said you are chosen. We got to learn to be stand out, even though we have our cracks. When you come to Christ, it is not your place uh, to fix the crack. It is not the place of the pastor. It is not the place of a brother or a sister. That is God's job. He is the potter. You are the clay. When he puts you on that potter's wheel, and if you ain't set good, you're going to fall off. And if you ain't set right, cracks will come. Like Minister Nash asks, what will you do if God does the cracking? Ask Job. If you don't believe me, go and read Job. Satan didn't just touch Job like that. Come on, you're Job preaching. was an upright man in the sight of God. His cracking came when Satan had to go to God to ask permission. permission. He just on, couldn't touch preaching. Job like that. That was not his place. So what will you do? Will you let your wife tell you curse God and die? Will you let your friends tell you curse God and die? What will you do? Even when the cracking happening with Job, when he lost his children, it was one crack. His wife was a crack. His friends was a crack. The death of his children was a crack. The sewers was a crack. My God, when he lost all his animals, that was a crack. So you are saying that under pressure cracks come, but there is something that is going to hold the crack together. The Lord wants to make our life whole again. He wants to fix those cracks. 
He wants to put you back together again. Having a crack means that something is happening under the pressure. What pressure it is? Is it the pressure of the world? The cares of the world? Or is it under the pressure of God? It's a place in you that something is wrong or there is some sort of fixing going on. One area that is cracked is putting weight on another area to keep it together. Sometimes having crack, it pushes you to all kind of fixers. It takes you to all kind of people who don't have a clue what they are doing. Then you end up more cracked than you are. God, Before my God. we can come to wow. the real fixer, yes. we gotta stop going here, there, and everywhere. The force of strongholds, addiction, habits, situation, hurts that create cracks. If it's not God creating the crack, cracks are evidence that something is not right. And it needs a touch by the potter's hand. Jesus, of course, a crack can be fixed. A crack can be mended. A crack can be sealed. A crack can be made whole again. Even with the crack, it shows that it's still holding together because there is someone there with you, but you need the potter. Having cracks doesn't define who you are in God. It can't stop God from using you. Cracks can never determine the final say over your life. God still wants you with all those cracks. He is the creator and he knows just what to do with the cracks. Jesus can fix anything. It doesn't matter the capacity of your crack. No matter how long the crack is. It doesn't matter how wide the crack is. You can be cracked to be almost shattered. The topic is cracked but not broken. But that is nothing hard for the Lord to fix. Being cracked doesn't make you the least among. It just means you need to stop trying to do it on your own and turn it all over to Jesus. Sometimes cracks may take longer to mend. And that is okay because we all have different process to go through. Our cracks are different. Our cracks come from, we say, family. Our cracks come from lifestyles. Our cracks come from habit. Our cracks come from being transferred. Spirits are transferable, whether we believe it or not. Sometimes, we got to stop watching other people who is pretending to have it together. Some folks just cover up better. But they too are cracked and is in need of fixing. There are people who know they are cracked and don't have a clue of how they are still keeping it together. But God, there are times we face some moments that we should be alive that we should be alive or not in our right minds, but God. So you are cracked, but God. Have you ever seen a cracked thing? It looked like it will break apart at any time, but because of the pressure it is under, but because of the strength of the material, the thing is made up of it is refusing to break. It is refusing to become shattered. It is refusing to come apart. Or oh, whatever it is keeping it together works well under pressure. So are we, because we are held together by God. We are cracked. We crack and done, but not breaking. No matter the pressure of the thing, all it is doing is creating more cracks, but not breaking. That is why many of us are still standing. It is God. The dead of butter remove his hand. 
then we will become broken. And it is either the potter will fix us or we will remain shattered until the day of judgment and then we will go where we belong. The Lord still have need of you. Those same cracks are the testimonies you have to pass on to another when the potter has put you back together. Let the potter Jesus rest his hand upon you. He is able, he is capable, he is more than willing to put you back together again. He will even connect those cracked areas better than before. People will see your cracks and count you out, look down on you, try to make you feel like you have no worth and even go to the depths of talking about your errors to others. But I am here to tell you that the Lord can do everything and anything. He can fix those cracks. He can seal those cracks. He can mend those cracks. He can recreate you. He can transform you. That is his job. With man, it is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Those cracks can be fixed. Man has a tendency to throw away anything that has a crack even before attempting to fix it and that is why it's happening to us sometimes when we accept christ we feel like it's a quick fix but we got to remember that we have some cracks that created over the years so it will take years for christ to fix us and that is okay you don't look at another. You don't know how long it takes to fix somebody else. You don't know how long they have been on the threshing floor. You don't know how long they have been in the fire. Don't look at another. Set your eyes on God. Don't be ashamed of your cracks. Go boldly before God and say, God, I have a problem with my mouth. When anybody say anything, I'm quick to answer. And I am trying, but I cannot do it in my own strength. That is a crack. For the word of God says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. But that which is edifying, so that whoever hear it, when they hear it, it will bring change. When they hear it, it will uplift them. When they hear it, they will know who Christ is and what he's all about and what he's able to do. God is not that type of God. He will make necessary changes to every crack in your life. Just surrender to him. He can fix it if you don't bring it. If you can't crack down and you want to paint over, you're going to take it to the mechanic. The mechanic is not going to come to you. So, so are we supposed to do? We have to go to God. Stop worrying about what man will say. Stop worrying about what people will think. If you used to do that, after hearing these words, after so many nights, I am not saying continue living in sin. I am not saying continue to create cracks. If you have any cracks, let God do the cracking. Because some of us, we need some cracking for true. Because when God is doing a work in us, we become pompous and we become proud and we become I, 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 me, me, me. It has nothing to do with you. Yes, it is yes, not yes, about yes. you. It is all about God. So that's where the cracking come in. And when God crack you, He's testing to see how loyal you can be when there is pressure. Because many of us say, God, 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 with our mouth. But when it comes time to stand up, we become weak. We fall down the pressure. God knows exactly what your life would be like. God knows exactly what decisions you made that has caused you to become cracked and not broken. So please, 
You have to go to God and ask him to mend your cracks for you. He is the creator of your life. God knows that we can become broken at times because after having so many cracks, crack all over. And next thing again, you know what has happened to some of us? When we are too much in ourselves, we got to fall. We got to fall sometimes. We have to made, be made submissive. Sometimes force got to bring us down so that the light of God can seep into those cracks to remind us. Sometimes sickness come upon us sometimes. That have to happen to remind us, look, you didn't create yourself. Yes, you were created in your mother's womb, but she couldn't do that without the help of God. You are not broken because of the mercies of God that are new every day and they are keeping you together. We are not broken because we, God has good plans for our lives even when we mess up. When you read in John chapter 4, many of us, we are familiar with that woman who met Jesus at the well. When she went with the conversation, they both had about drinking and she telling Christ, oh, the well is too deep. That woman, they had some crack. She done had five husbands. Jesus said to you, said to her, the man that you will know, and you won. So she had, she cracked them. Jesus began telling her about her cracks. Jesus knew her cracks, but he was more concerned about fixing them, making her feel that she can receive what she desires in him, that she will not have need for those cracks that she are, she's relying on, those cracks that she's creating. That woman reasoned with Jesus. And all she did after reasoning, the word that Christ gave to her, I could imagine how those cracks started sealing, how she felt loved. Then she started thinking, look, I have no need for that man that I have now. I have just met a man. Come see a man who have told me of things that I have done, who have reminded me that I may have cracks, but I can give you a drink and you shall never thirst. That drink will seal up those cracks. That drink will make her, make her new again. That drink will make her whole. All Jesus wanted her to recognize is that he can fix her, make her whole. Give her a new beginning. Mend the cracks of her seeking love when he can give her that love she kept searching for. It doesn't matter the caliber of your crack. Jesus can remove it. He will make your life brand new. All of us have some sort of crack. We put on makeup. Dress up in brand name clothing. We drink alcohol. We turn all to, to all sorts of things. But instead of fixing cracks, we are creating more cracks. We try to dress up the crack, but it is only temporary. It's only a temporary fix. Come to Jesus before you shatter or get broken. He can fix the broken also. But why wait so long when you can come to the potter shop with your crack? He will mold you. He will make you. He will fill you. And he will create you over again. Don't let that crack kill you. Don't die with those cracks. When you can come to somebody who can fix it. Christ will not condemn you. He's waiting patiently on you to come to him. The word of God declares, he said, it is the sick 
that need the physician, not the whole. So God already know. He knows about our cracks. But how will we fix them if we don't bring them to him? Our cracks may not be the same, but a crack is a crack. Whether it wide, whether it long, it's still a crack. We all have cracks and we are still standing and not broken because someone prayed for us. Someone is praying for us. Jesus is interceding on our behalf. The spirit of God is making groanings on our behalf. Hallelujah. God's love, his compassion, and his mercies, they are acting on our behalf. It is time to go to the fixer who is Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles, your errors, your mistakes, your shortcomings. Those are your cracks. You are cracked, but not broken. It is time to move away from your cracked state. You've held on to it for too long. It is time to give it up. It is time to let go. It is time to go to the potter's house. It is time to find your mender, find the fixer. Our fixer is Jesus. He can fix anything. He can fix all things. He can fix everything. He's a God of possibilities. Sometimes with the depths of our cracks, when we go to people, the word of God declares, it says those who are mature spiritually, he said that to bear up those who are weak. But sometimes even then we can't depend on. Because you go to them and you come back out with more crack with more than where you went in with. And instead of helping you, they can't go tell a brother. They can't go tell a sister. They're adding more cracks. And then you seem to wonder, well, God, but this seems to forget. The word of God declares the arms of flesh will fail you. It's simply telling you, look, the flesh them that you're going to, even though I tell you that they are to help you, they too have cracks. You have cracks. If you can't trust yourself, how can you put trust in somebody else with cracks? A cracked person can't help a cracked person. A crack person will only help you to the extent that they know. They can only help you based on their own experience. And what if they have not met the potter? Then their testimony cannot help you. When God fixes the crack or the cracks, the same people who never saw anything good in you will be left in awe. They're going to say, but no, we were going on with she that any same Michelle the other day who couldn't even tell she had from she foot, who've been struggling so long, who people in a say what kind of Christian she be, who used to answer about everything. People will always remember your story. Your story is your cracks. But when they see the glory of God on you, they don't want to rejoice with you because they know when God fix you, you have come to a place where you've been made whole. And you know, look, I have wasted many years depending on people to help me get these cracks fixed. But when I have known about the crack fixer, I have never been the same. I am not the same. And I am depending on him. They will not understand it. And that is not your problem anymore. The most you can do. If they welcome you, then you give your testimony. But if they don't welcome you, leave them unto God. Because the word of God says in Proverbs 29 and verse 1, 
There are some people, they have so much crack and they ain't want the fixer. It gonna come a time when the neck gonna become so stiff. No remedy there for them. Not even spirit of God want to touch them. So when you see some people with the crack them and they become jealous of you when your cracks are being fixed, they have the opportunity to come into contact with the Holy Spirit, to come into contact with Christ. But they refuse to be fixed because they want to drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devil. They want to eat from the table of the devil and from the table of the Lord they can't decide. And the word of God speaks about anybody who is double-minded, they are unstable. They're neither hot nor cold. And God gave us a choice. So when you see some people with their crack, you can't help them. Because if they are refusing the help from the creator, the one who knows the statue, the one who knows our makeup, the one who knows our build, the one who knows our in and our out, if they are refusing to sit under the potter's hand, so then oh, what make you think you can fix them? We gotta be careful of what cracks we want to touch. It's not every crack deserves touching. Some crack you got to left. Some crack, they rejected. Some crack, God's spirit don't left them. Some crack, when they were placed under the fire of the Holy Ghost, they didn't want that. Because what? They don't want to be submissive. They don't want to subject themselves to the potter. They want to tell God what to do, when to do it, how to do it, when he must fix the crack. When God saying, look, you have been proclaiming my name for too long to be wobbling in sin, to be still wobbling in fornication, to be still wobbling in lying. I want to fix them cracks, but you are not allowing me. You want to tell me, oh, God understands. 20 years with them stinking dirty crack. And you telling me, God understand? God understand what? The devil is a liar. It's a light and darkness can mix. And it can't take 20 years for God to fix a crack. Some of us have our cracks longer than some because God needs to work on us. But it don't take 20 years. Stop that life and God. Tell them you don't want to give the thing. Tell them you don't want to give the man. Tell them you don't want to stop thief. Tell them you don't want to stop lying. Because you want to fit in in the world. We are in this world. But we are not of this world. This is the same world that causes us to have cracks that we shouldn't have. That make us feel if we gain this and if we gain that. We can be made whole, but nothing goes so. Satan, from in the beginning, with Eve, he's the one, he's subtle when he whisper in Eve's ear. Right there and then, Eve became cracked. And from the time, sometimes, we allow ourselves to be cracked by the wrong spirit. More spirit that enter, more unfamiliar spirits, more nasty, dirty habits. So we got to learn to be true. We got to learn to be honest. Let God fix those cracks. When God fix the cracks or the crack, it is a new beginning to something great in the Lord. So bring your cracks or crack and come to Jesus. Believers, sinners, self-righteous people, every crack can be fixed. You don't have to become broken to realize that you have a crack. You know you got the crack, 
Where you want to wait till you're broken? Where you want to give God so much work even though it's nothing for him? Where we can be just honest? Where we can decide, look, Lord, I serve in you and only you. And this is my problem. And I know you got the solution. You are the solution finder. You are the fixer. You are the maker. So any crack in me that is not of you, fix it. Fix it how you see it fit. Fix it however you please it. Fix it how you want. You have the say. You have the lead. You have the guide. What you think when Christ say that I am leaving? Christ knew that when he was leaving, he left some crap behind. And it's the people who are supposed to know who Jesus is got the most crack. We come to him with crack, and when we come to him, we're still creating crack. Why are we like that? We only thinking about ourselves. We let him flesh control. Yes, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But some of us that make some willful crack, some willful sin, some willful errors that we can avoid. Yes, sometimes it might pain you. But once you are in Christ, leave it alone. He going to fix it. He going to do it. We got to learn to give the cracks to Christ. We have to. He never told us it will be easy. Like I was saying when Christ was leaving, he promised that he will send the comforter. You think Christ now, hey, no way he send the comforter? Because, you know, we are a people. We stubborn. We hard-headed. We selfish. We like we own way. We like to contend with God. We ain't like to, to fall under the will. We ain't want to follow the statutes. We want to twist and turn them. And when we don't twist and turn the, the statutes, we mess up ourselves. Come on, man. You are cracked, but you are not broken if you're hearing this message. So come to Jesus with your crack. Don't wait till you're shattered. Because when you're broken, believe it or not, when you become broken, it can mean death. It's not everybody who is brought into the broken state can be made over, can be made whole. Sometimes they got to stay in the broken state and understand, look, all the well God calling you to fix this crack and you refuse. And God knows how somehow we had be that if he fix you, when you're done broken, you now have to come back. So you have to lift your broken and you operate in your broken state and understand yourself and know that God is supreme and learn to reverence God. We got to stop taking God for granted. We got to stop using this cock as excuse. They are not excuses. Yes, it is painful. But they are our testimonies. To bring glory to God. So come with your crack them. Come to the potter's house. Come let him place you on the wheel. Let him smooth you out. Let him rub you under his gentle hands. And maybe sometimes you got to grab back the clay. Because somehow we let to go to hand. So you got to put down some force on some of us. And we need the force sometimes. So come back. Come back. Come back. To the potter. This is the word of the Lord. My God, my God, my God, my God. Listen, if you are on chat, please, you need to give some thumbs up. What a word. 
What a word. I am telling you, I am, uh, listen, I had to nail myself down uh, on, on, on my seat. No, trust me, this is the word of the Lord. Uh, glory to God. Uh, before we put on our next uh, person, listen to me, listen to me. This is speaking truth to power. Uh, glory to God. You cannot Listen, the woman, she said, touch on so many things. One of the things that I realized that a lot of people, they're trying to dress up the crap, then put on suit, pan it, then put on wig, pan it, then put on um, heels, pan it, all sort of thing, then try to dress it up. When them crap, them try to go to plastic surgery, put on an extra bottom, an extra breast, that time them a crack up all over the place. Let me tell you something, man. Stop, stop trying to disguise the crap. Because guess what? That which you do not deal with is going to deal with you. We bless the name of the Lord. And that's why the woman of God, and I, I'm going to go there when it's my turn. I'm going to go to Job. Let me tell you something. As I said last night, what do you do when I've got to crack you? Some of us got to crack with, for, for expose some things out of way. For what? To redeem us, to bring us to ourselves. Some of us are going to crack and put for sit down and watch my god come on man god is about to do a drastic thing we're full of pride crack we're full of arrogance crack we pull high-minded crack when you look on your crack all over the place like a cracker jack you understand <laughs> you remember no i don't know you remember when I, I was a little girl there was these cracker jack in the box you understand? And the cracker jacket and have popcorn with like a peanut, they get like a toy. You understand? I said, some of us crack up. We're coming like the cracker jack. And guess what happened? When you are crack, let me, let me tell you something. We're going to the next speaker now. But when you are crack, you understand? Look at this. A crack person becomes a manipulator. I, listen to I don't want to start talk. When you are crack, I think somebody put in the chat something about Saul. When you crack, the spirit of God cannot flow through you quickly. So you start to manipulate, you start to lie, you start to um um full of deceit and deception. Because guess what? You're trying to contain the anointing that's leaking out of your crack. Sit down and go to Potter's house. Come on, man. Listen to my man and don't get me started enough. You understand? Because guess what? You're trying to contain something that is leaking. Because when God created us, he created us to carry something. Oh, come on, somebody. But you became crack and you refuse as a woman of God to accept that you're crack. You're leaking. So you become bitter. You become angry. When you hear a crack person speak, all you hear a bitter girl come from their mouth. Them jealous, them covetous, them not have nothing good to say. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord cannot contain in a crack vessel. Listen to me, man, and don't start me up in this place tonight. We give the Lord praise. Let me calm myself down. Crack, being honest, being transparent, because the Holy Spirit know your crack. And they start watching and say, but look here, look at so-and-so, look at her, look at him. You lie to everybody else. You put on the makeup on everybody else. But God has a few in Sardis who is not blinded by the enemy. That we have 2020 vision in the realm of the spirit. And all when you put on the makeup, all when you put on the tie, your shoes could have worth a million dollars. Your suit could have fit you like a pencil. The spirit of discernment will reveal beyond and we see the crack, we see the leaking. But guess what? You ever see some people? Um, the mature, you know what? Let me, you know what? Holy Ghost, yes, Lord. We give God praise for the woman of God. <laughs> Never wait my turn, trust me. We give God praise for the woman of God tonight. No, this is real talk. And those of you who know me on real talk, we keep it real. We don't pamper, we don't play with devil. We are honest. 
because God respects honesty. If I want deliverance, um, ministers that's on Zoom, if me have an issue, Pastor Andre, and me want deliverance from it, me have to come to God honestly. I say, God, listen, me cannot control my flesh. Me crack so much that me can't control my flesh. You need to help me. I'm not going to say, oh, you know, we're, we're bandied it up and put. No, because guess what? You have a bandied up a cut yet. You see all the blood of sepo to the bar. You can't hide oh come on you cannot hide from god where you gonna flee from him you understand you're not fooling nobody but you, you're not even you can't fool the holy ghost you understand there's people you can't fool so just come honest and humble yourself oh bless the name of the lord be honest because as i think somebody said in chat god love honesty because if you're going to go to the part of the fixer, you have to be honest and know what's wrong. You have to tell him no already, but he want you to come and say to him, this is where I'm cracked. Are you cracked on the, on the handle? Are you cracked in the middle? Are you cracked at the side? Come on, man. This is true to power, man. It's real talk. And every other Sunday, we have word in the house at this time. Trust me. Uh, glory to God. Many of your churches shut down at Sunday night. You can't come get a word. Uh, not, uh, undiluted. No compromise here. Trust me. So if you know you cannot take the truth, I don't know if you're going to want to stay here. But God bless those of you who can set the, take the truth. Because the truth will set you free. I hear the minister say, those, me think of me alone who said dirty, nasty spirit. But she said it because they're dirty, nasty spirit for true. Call it as it is. Glory to God. The potter wants to fix us, but we got to be honest. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord. My question is, what do you do when a God crack you? All right. Upon that note, uh, who's coming up next? Is it Rakim or is it Pastor Andre? All right. Rakim, you want Pastor Andre go? Or you want you go? You? All right, Brother Rakeem, go ahead, because Pastor Andre is going to set broad doors that we have. We release Brother Rakeem to just share his little bit. You know, I love this young man. He loves the Lord. Uh, you understand? He's growing. And you see, I thank God for these. Um, one thing, if people really know me, I when I ask persons to do stuff, let me tell you, it's not because we cannot do it. It's not because I don't, I can't do it. But I think that God has given me that thing inside of me that I like to pull out on people. I like to put people out there, build upon their strengths so they can overcome their weaknesses. Uh, glory to God. And this man of God, he loves God. He's just on fire for God. And he's a part of the Real Talk um, team of hosts and co-hosts. Uh, so I release him now to, yeah, talk to us a little bit, uh, you know, about being cracked go ahead uh brother akeem and then we'll hear from um minister andre down there in florida and then you know me already me i gotta come and put on the whipped cream on it go ahead well, good night again everybody out there listening well to me being cracked was a a task for me you know i didn't know god and so but i was trying to be stubborn and minister michelle said i got to be honest with god and they got to come with your brokenness and sometimes, you know, people will make you feel like you yeah, ain't nobody. But when you find God, you find yourself and God will make you sometimes be alone to find that it ain't all about what I think, it's all about what he think about you and what he can do with your crack and what he could make you change somebody's life by just by speaking. Because I used to go through a lot of things and I just think that there was no way out because people to tell me, oh, me ain't a body. Oh, yes, how you look. Oh, yes, you yes, you always smoking. Yes, you always drinking. Yes, you always lying. Yes, you always teething. I said, yeah, but God, what I need to do? I keep questioning God and God keep telling me, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. But you just ain't doing something. I just ain't doing something right. And I had to go to my mess to make a message out of it because. People feel like they can't come out of addiction. They feel like they can't come out of drug abuse and these things and getting beaten up and these things. I've been to all of these things and I really thank God I'm still living because if it wasn't for the crap in my life, I would not be here on this platform tonight. And uh, you know, I really give God thanks for how he's using me now to impact somebody's life out there where guy in it hard right now, being depressed, stay easy. And when you find your Lego, of depression and let go of everything, let go of everything where I went to, 
and let God fully come into you, then people will see her as a new being. They want to say, who is that man? Who is that man they be? Uh, then you see him by, just that, just the call Minister Michelle just said, oh, people can say, uh, who that be? Because that's when God put your glory upon you. That's when God put you to shine in the eyes of man. And man going to see as a different being now because they never know that God could take you out of a mess and turn your life into a message and tell you, well, why? This is what I wanted to do a long time, but you just was ignoring me. You were being ignorant to the enemy's devices. You wasn't, you wasn't hearing what I was saying to you. You wasn't listening to my voice. You were listening to other voices. People out there telling you this and telling you that. But if you say, if you calm down and be at a place of rest, and you, and you let God be your guide, God will do so much great things with you. When you step out, you step out with confidence. You step out knowing that God is the center of your life. God is the reason why you're living. God is the reason why you're here today. God is the reason why you're moving like how you're moving right now. And as you, as you could see, I had many friends, but friends but last, get last along the way because of that wasn't showing me in the right direction to my calling. So when I, I realized that now, when I, I meet a, Minister Michel, Michel, right, I find that she's a true friend to me and she always there for me in spite of I used to act like me want to talk to her, but she, she got kind of way just pulling me and telling me, bye, bye, I love to you. So God, son of man, you know, you know, you know, you know better than this, yeah, you know this, but I used to push her away, but she doesn't know how to get me. She doesn't know how to get, get on my skin. She doesn't know how to do this thing, man. And she just put me in a place of being myself and knowing myself and not saying, well, why you could do it. And that's what we need sometimes. We need somebody to encourage us and tell us we're doing something good and keep up the good work. And we need somebody to pray with us and, you know, to keep boosting our energy and boosting our metabolism in God and say that God is the center. And when you do something wrong, don't feel hurt. Don't feel depressed, don't put yourself in a, in a shell and locked away because the spirit he wants to be locked up in a box. He wants to be freed. So he wants to use you in a way now to say, well, why? The same makes no sense. But if you if you let him have way in you, he gonna make ways for you that you that you never thought that he could have made for you. And once you be honest with him, he gonna be honest with you. And he can tell you exactly how you could make it out and how you could make it through life journey without worrying about what your mother gonna say, your father gonna say, your sister gonna say, everybody gonna say on you. You just gotta do what he tell you to do and do it pleasing unto him and know that he gonna fight for you. He gonna fight the battle. Don't go try to fight the battle for yourself because you're gonna always lose. Because you're gonna be of flesh. When you be of the spirit, then let the spirit of God move for you. The spirit of God gonna move so mighty with you. Then you ain't gonna know what you're doing. But you just gotta let the Lord have his way and anybody stand before you, they're going to have nothing to say but bow down to the name of Jesus. They're going to, they're going to say, God, I'm sorry. God, forgive me. I was wrong. And they're going to come to you. But not knowing that a hey, you is the spirit of God moving through you to change their life, to make them be impacted by the way how you speak, by the way how you expound on the word, by the way how you, you're setting. You just change up. And you ain't, being, you ain't being yourself no more because you've been of the spirit, you ain't of this world no longer. Because the flesh have no hold on you no more. When the flesh the desires come, when they come with the flesh the desires, and so you're gonna be like, man, I'm a changed man. I can't do this thing no more. You know? God gone, God's watching you right now. God watching you. You go come out of this store. As long as you're willing to learn about him, I will teach you. But if you're willing to like go along in the same old way all the time, you can you, you can function good because you, your mind gonna be here for God today and tomorrow you're here for the world. You're here today for God, then you're there. You got to choose one. It's either on the river or at the bank. That's what I have to tell myself. It's either on the river or at the bank. Because you ain't gonna know which one to choose. You got to choose which side you're on. Because a double-burdened man, as Michelle just said, it's unstable, man. Yeah, you're gonna know where to go, which direction to turn, and you're gonna always be frustrated, you're gonna always be depressed, you're gonna always feel hurt, you're gonna always feel rejected. But when you got God, you're gonna feel loved, appreciated, healed, delivered, captured, everything. God gonna make a make you make you into a powerful somebody that can't even reckon with you anymore. No and when they see you, they're gonna be like, boy. 
Are we willing, willing to follow your God, boy? Your God, really working in your life, boy? Are we willing to follow your God now? And that's why we want right now. The young men, they need to come up and step forward and step forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
you got to turn to the word and the only way how you can make it out if you turn to the word and let God be your guide. Let God, let God show you what to do. Yeah, don't want nobody and say, oh, look at she life, look at he life. He going sweet, but ain't all the time that sweet and dandy and all it can be. You got to be smart. You got to learn to observe things and say, God, I don't want to be like nobody. I just want to be like myself. I just want to make a difference in your kingdom. I just want to win souls for you. I just want to see people's life change. I just want to see the children them playing and being one and stop fighting against each other and stop trying to break down your brother and stop trying to break down your sister and try to build them up and tell them, be encouraged, God love you. Don't tell them that God ain't love them. Don't tell them that this and that. Don't try to discourage them because they're going to the cracks them. They got to be the, the men though. They got to, they got to turn their life around. They got to change. They got to try to make sure they can see a change in them. They got to try to pound the word in the head all the time. Say, so read your Bible. Come, let's come, let's read a scripture together, man. Come, let's pray together. Come, let me pray for you. Come, let's come, let's go to church together. Tell them, be encouraged, you know. Yeah, that's what some of them need right now. Some of them being let us show because they ain't got a body to talk to them. And the parents and sort of turn them down and tell them they're stupid and that this and that. that. I know, I know that go. Because I'm appealing to me to do me all of that there too. But you know, one thing I tell myself, I say, God, I know, I know me is stupid. I know me is dumb. But I just was slow. But God has helped me, does help me. And he really helped me a lot. He helped me and I come talkative. And I come like, I said, God, you helped me so much that I come so talkative that I can't even, they don't even know how I get up. I was talking and ta calling words. I never was to call and spelling words. I never was to spell and all of these things. How you get up? I said, the word of God is what changed me. And being honest with God is what changed me. Because I was always to be like, I could do this. I always saying I could do this. Uh, I know, I know, I always know. But if it ain't good to always know, sometimes we go to say, me ain't no, me ain't no, me, me ain't no, could you show me? Me ain't no, but that's when I find myself not saying, but I really got to ask and it's going to be given unto me and I really see it work out in my life for real. And up to this day, I can't believe that I pick up such, such a speed that I can't even believe that I pick up so fast. I said, God, thank you for showing them who, who you made me to be. When I look in the camera, I say, I stupid and retarded and I can't do nothing and half anything. And yeah, so you look, yeah, it's crazy, boy. That we're praising God. We are God be. Ah, uh, kind of thing. Yeah, we are going to, yes, yeah, you know where you want to be. Yes, you yeah, know if you're the pastor, if you're the this, or you're the that. I said, but nobody do in my future. Nobody can tell me who I be. And I said, God, I don't really desire this foolishness gain in my mind now. I got to block out all of these people, even if, and the Bible also said, when your mother and your father will say, okay, oh God, God, take me. So that's when I really understand what you, what you mean. That when they, when they turn me down, when my family, my relatives turn me down and these things like, boy, you ain't nobody. You're the mess. You can't change. They have to tell me that. I can't change. But so who is them to tell me I can't change? It's only me. It's only me. It's ever for want to give in to what they're saying. Or if I'm willing to say, God, take me as I am. Do what you want to do with me. Do, me, do what you want to do with me. So when they see me, they're going to say, yo, that's Rakim. That's Rakim. Yes, that's Rakim. I am, I am who I am in Christ Jesus. Because I know that none of you can stop me. And every time I just up, they say, why are the pastor, man? Yeah, I look just like the pastor. I said, because I just in the position where y'all say, me and I want to be, me and I want to be. Me and I want, want to be. But God, God knows what he want me to be. And the right thing gonna come when he gonna put me out there to show somebody that he really could make a masterpiece out of a mess. That when you're done and out, that's when God will find you. When you're done and out to your last, your last drop, and you want to give up, that's when God will find you and tell you, Yo, you got better in you, I inside of you. So don't ever feel discouraged. Don't ever feel like, oh, I can't make it, or I can't get up off of the ground. You get your fall on so much times that when you, that, that you fall down and you, you, you're gonna stay down there, or you can get up. Get up and move on. Dust off your set, dust off your hand and say, God, I'm ready again. I'm ready again for the war. I'm ready again for the battle. I'm ready again to fight this fight to the end. I can't leave this world with an unfinished task. God, you said I could do it. You said 
I could do it. You say I could move mountain. You say I could speak thing and see coming to this one. You say I could see it's everybody delivered. You say I could speak a word and see change. You give me the authority, so therefore I shouldn't be frightened when somebody tell me, me you know what I'm saying, and they're laughing at me. In spite of they're laughing at me, I still gonna speak. And one day, you're gonna touch them in a spot that you're gonna make them change their life. You're gonna make them say, boy, I want to know your God. You're gonna make them bow down and all. They're gonna want to know my God so deep that they're gonna cry and they're gonna come with a brokenness. They're gonna come with a mess. They're gonna come with a lie. They're gonna come with a hurt. And they're gonna say, how can I receive this God that you serve? But only if you accept him in your life, that's how you're going to, that's how you're going to receive him. You got to accept him first. You got to go deep within. You got to search your heart deep within. See if there be any brokenness, if there be any wickedness inside of you so that he could use you, so that he could, he could, he could maintain himself inside of you and he could use you step by step, day by day. And also you got to surround yourself with somebody Amen. who can see you too and who can pull you through to the end and who will see you to the end and say, job well done, man. I can, I can see you changing. I can see you turning around. I can see you turning to God and not turning to the world. I can see you come out of the world and don't care when nobody say you're still standing on the promises of God because God is the one who knows you from the, from the day you was born. Even before you was found in your mother's womb, God know you, you, you was going to be here. God know that people throw you away in the garbage or when your mother bring you, she throw you in the garbage and somebody find you. And somebody bring you out and somebody say, yo, this man here, he come out of the garbage and they're looking for my mother still. Like, even though she chubby, I can look for still and say, mommy, this is the son where you many years ago. And I said, mommy, this is what God do with me. This is what God, this is what God do with me. And she gonna be so shocked to see that she son come up and she daughter come up. And say, mommy, I love you. Hug you up and give you some money. And say, mommy, I love you. I appreciate you even though you chubby me where, even though you pull me dear. But I still love you. I still appreciate you. I still wanted to know who you, who you was because somebody who a biological mother find me and bring me up into this man or this woman. And I just wanted to know that I love you still anyway, even though you, you didn't have no use for me, even though your title would not make it, even though you, to, you left me there to die. But God said, I shall not die, but live and declare his word. Even to you who told me where, even to you who think that wasn't going to make it, even to you who think that I was a nothing, even you who, who walk on me like I walk and do, just have a foot on top of me and do me as a like. I can continue to do good to you still. I can continue to show your love and appreciation. We can got a bond still because love over power a multitude of evil. It can't break down nothing, but love always win. Love always will win. No matter what your choice I say, love always win. Don't be, don't be like them. Don't be like the world and be cheery and turn aside from God's word. They got to finish everything that he teach you. Finish it. And then God going to reward me openly. God going to say, yo, yo, you ready? And then you, you got to say yes, because if you ain't say yes, you ain't go back, you ain't go back to the same old ways. You ain't go back to the same old mess. But if you really want to be changed, you're going to say yes to Jesus and say yes forever and for the rest of my life. And I want to see many years upon years upon years. I want to see my grandkids after grandkids after grandkids after grandkids. I want to see a whole of them and say, yeah, God is doing something wonderful. I want to left behind something where I could say, yes, that's my son. Represent me good. Represent Jesus, you know? Be a man of God, be a woman of God, be confident, be courageous. And when the born, when my kids born, and the queen and the clean is over their life now, even though they ain't come yet. And the queen and the clean over them now, that when they're born, they're going to carry on this mantle for me. And they're going to be confident like me. And they're going to be fearless. They're going to say, yes, Prophesy. I'm going up here to speak it. I mean, going to give up because people going to come and try to trample me. But they can't stop me because I can do what I got to do. And I can say what I got to say. And if they like it, if they like it, go in the Bible and tell God that, that, that you like what I say. Go in the Bible and tell God you like what I'm doing because I'm being real. And this is what real talk is all about. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs>
<laughs> you know what? Come on, listen, people. If you're listening to this young man, let me tell you something. For those of you who are on the chat and listening behind the scenes, let us give him a hand. Let me tell you something. We've got to appreciate our young men. He could have been still out there drinking, smoking, doing all these things, but look what God is doing. Look what he's doing with a cracked vessel that he intended uh, to have use for. And I just want to love on you, uh, Brother Rakeem. You know, again, you said so many things that I could touch on. Uh, the importance of staying around like-minded people. Uh, you understand? Standing up. Okay. We talked about uh, those godly convictions. No matter what people are saying, you stand up on the truth of the word of God. So I want to bless God for you. And I'm so honored uh, to be working alongside of you on this platform uh, for time to come. We bless the name of the Lord. Uh, we're going to hear from Minister Andre but before we do that, there's something that Brother Rakeem said, and I just want to bless us with a little bit of this song, and then the next voice that you're going to hear is that of uh, Minister Andre. First time on this platform. Again, he is my, my son-in-law's brother. So we're a family. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So it's good to know that they have a man of God in their family. Uh, yep. So again, uh, let me just play a little bit of this. Uh, so that um, we could just listen a little bit. Somebody needs to hear a little bit of this tonight. Again, welcome to all our viewers. It's Real Talk. Uh, yeah. You could wipe your tears away. You don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. Oh, there's a friend who would wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, I know, I I know that I, you can make it. Cracked, but you can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand. With Jesus, I can. With him I know I can stand, no matter what may come my way, my life is in. Ah, uh, yes, indeed, somebody needs to. Uh, there'll be tests and trials. Uh, they'll get us down at times. When your loved ones are forsaking you, you can't find them at all. But remember, we have a friend in Jesus. He'll wipe our tears away. Her heart is broken. Just lift your voice and say, decree it tonight. I know that I can stand, don't give up, no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands, with him I know, 
Uh, we can make it tonight. Cracks, but we can make it. Uh, cracks, but with him, we know we can stand. And no matter what comes our way, our life is in the hands of the creator. Yes. Uh, decree it in the atmosphere tonight. I know that I, no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Uh, yes, indeed, no matter what comes our way, our life is in the hands of a sovereign God. Upon that, I want to release uh, for the first time on Real Talk, the first time on this platform, uh, Minister Andre Roden out of Florida. Uh, glory to God. Go ahead, man of God. And uh, yes, let us hear what uh, the Lord has instructed you and inspired you to speak to us. About. Um, greet you, let me greet each and everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Um, it's such a privilege and an honor to be on Real Talk. Uh, I've been enjoying and I've been listening and I've been blessed by each and every one word tonight and i'm like my god what a wonderful god we serve you know and when minister michelle read read job i'm like shaking my head i'm like okay you're on the right track and when you said about you know what if it's god who has started the crocker been you, you've been cracked by god and i'm like you know when god cracked you you are cracked for a purpose and job was cracked for a purpose so others can see that god is god and god alone even when satan said to him you know stretch forth your hands anything a man will give for his life that's the part that hit me y yes you can lose everything around you but when it comes to your life, when you are cracked within, hallelujah, glory to God. When you are cracked within, then the crack became serious. So Satan said to, to God, you know, anything a man will give for his life. Well, God said, okay, you can, I, I will church for, because God is the one that touched him. We've got to understand that God is the one that touched Job, not Satan. Satan cannot do nothing to Job because God is in control. And, and God said, okay, I will do that. But guess what? Our crack as I said, will help somebody to come to God, to come to know God as their personal savior. And as we're talking about the crack, you know, sometimes crack make us make excuses. You know, just like when she touched on Genesis, when when God when 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 God came down and said to Eve, Adam said, "Is the woman that you gave me?" You know, he started the crack began to make excuses, and, and 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 I love the part when she talk about the makeup and cover. You cannot cover up a crack, even if you put makeup, it's gonna open. It's a crack. It's gonna sink in. Once it's dry, the crack is gonna expose whatever beneath it, and it's gonna fall out. And I'm telling you, trust me, it's such a privilege. And as a young man growing up, as my brother was saying, you have friend who will turn aside your friend will say ah oh, manner of evil what are you proving what man you are young what are you talking about this christian christian and godly thing and see they want to tie you down you know see they oh my god you know see they want to hold you back you are young man you're vibrant look much nice lovely good look woman out there that you can have you're gonna be a christian what you want to be a nun or father what are you want to be but guess what they don't understand that greater as you said is in you than he that is in the world when christ called you he set apart you he said none that comment unto me and i will otherwise cast out jesus died on the cross and he said it is finished man redemption has been paid the crack has been healed once jesus died that crack that we are going through is a healing crack but the good about this crack that we have as christian because yes though we have christian have crack but our crack is to send healing to the nation our crack is for healing the nation it to pour out the spirit of god to the nation when we speak to somebody we are speaking out of that crack yes we are we are not broken no more because our crack is already healed but the crack within us is the spirit of god that come forth out of us to tell somebody that you gotta turn from your wicked ways you gotta turn from your sin for ways so my brothers my sister those who are listening to the live and those who are on real talk i am telling you your crack is a blessing to somebody when god cracked you it's a blessing to 
somebody yes we have generation crack yes we have some generation crack that is going around crack that if is for me and you understanding but the good thing about the potter he said i am the life the revelation and the light no man cometh unto me i would otherwise cast out so once you receive jesus though generation crack cannot harm you no more because the resurrection is here on time and i love that that, that the resurrection man is christ jesus the woman with the issue as brothers or sisters was saying she was crack yes she was crack but when the healer came the crack has been finished up she immediately she received healing she said come see a man that crack that you were thinking about is no more the crack that you were no more seeing is the crack that god is able to deliver when god said to you have a many he said yes yeah what a man is this i have many but come on but those men that i used to have there are no more my problem because the crack the water that you have given me now i can pour it out to somebody that they too can enjoy the life that is given so we who are called the set apart the ecclesiastic we are to stand our ground we are to stand firm in it's a retalk we are to tell people that sin is sin i was reading my sunday school lesson this morning and he said if a brother be finding a fault you are to tell that brother but if that brother won't listen bring an other with you and if he is still not listening bring it to the church council and if it, he said he should be a cast out a person not to dealt with that that doesn't mean we are gonna hide in a bubble from the world or crack never meant to be hiding a bubble or crack is to be exposed that person can know that god has changed a old filter like me hallelujah glory to god and i'm glad that god saved me one day i'm glad that he called me from the when i was going down in the pit of hell he wasn't lost i was the one who lost so he found me i wasn't searching for him he looked down on the lowest and he said here i am send me when they call they said who will go for adam fallen race he said here my send me give me a body i will take up the cup of the of the, the cup of salvation and i will bring back my children to me god bless you i i know i'm a talkative person but this time i want to hear from minister nash because i know she is burning up within to, to to give but god bless each and every one of you my words to you no matter what comes your way your crack is a blessing you're not broken anymore don't you cannot be broken god the crack is there to heal that brokenness hallelujah god bless you all i love you you're not finished you're not finished you're not finished no you're not finished you need to end yourself you're not finished don't worry about me you're not finished you have more to say come on man of god you have more to say man. my you're god not... my god I, you, I, that, 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 i just want to with time purpose because you know your wisdom is everything in yeah. christian but I, I i i love that 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 when that job and he's a perfect example of a crack by god he, he, but the thing about we can understand when God cracked us, He doesn't move everything out of the way. He has something to us to lean on. The wife was there for Job to produce more and more. So, your crack that you have, somebody is there to help you to grow in grace. My brother, my sister, your crack help you to grow in grace. In grace. When Satan said that you are finished. And Satan said, but well, tell Satan that you know his story. He knows your past, but you know his story. Because his story is the pit of hell. Your revelation is with God if you hold on to his unchanging hand. Hallelujah. I heard I heard one part said with, with, with Saul. When Saul was rejected by God because of disobedient or oh, crack can cause us disobedient. The disobedient crack is the one that fall us down when we won't obey god's word yes you come to me and you said brother Ron, you know so guess what god told me that you did something wrong and he said you are i, I ain't gonna puff up my face i said what well, your feet say what well, you think who you think who you think you are don't you know that i know god too 
In what we go to see him church, we know God like how you know him. In talk to me, but guess what? I am no longer hearing from God. I'm just flaming up as out of my own self. And that's a problem with us today as minister and Christian of God. We no longer hearing from God. You, you wonder why we are not having healing. You wonder why we have that the crack of healingness is no longer active in the church because self crack has overtaken God's work. But guess what? The, as minister, I say a few in Solis will not defile their garment. Uh, and when Paul write to the Corinthians church, he said to them, I know what is going on down there. Oh, fornication has been taken over the church. Of oh, all things has been taken off. I am writing to you to tell you, to let you know what you are to do and what you are not to do, because there is nothing keeping hidden under the sun. God wants his people back together again. God need his people to stand up for him. Come as a people and say, come hell and high water. You are to stand for God. When you, the, the songwriter said, roll back the curtain of memory no one then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Things could have happened to you that you know not of. But because of his blood, because of his resurrection on the cross, and he rise again on the third day, you and I have a hope to be with him and to reign with him. But before we can go to him, we have to stay here and do the work of him who sent us. We got to tell others of him. We cannot be too selfish of holding this salvation to us. Yes, sometimes the crack wants us to go on our, our little hidden corner and we want to hide. But guess what? Our oh, crack is a salvation, as a testimony, as our leader said. It's a testimony to tell others of the goodness of God. You know how much person are depending on you. You know how much person are depending on your testimony. How many people are depending on your word to know that God still here, still deserves and still set free ministers on the platform, no matter what. You know, sometimes, yes, we are burdened down. We feel lonesome. But guess what? He said he will never, and that's what keeps me each time, he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. He said if it's true, the flood is there. If it's true, the storm is there. If it's true, any empty, even the tree, look at the tree in Hebrew boys when they were two in the fiery furnace. The, 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 the king looked up and he said, Haven't we two tree in the fire? But look, I see the fourth one. Hallelujah. Go, come on now. He see the fourth one. He just no ordinary person, but it looked like the son of God. He see the light. When the light shine, the darkness will move. When the light shine, the veil from your eye, your crack of light will shine. And those blindness that those blinded eyes out there will see God. Yes, we faltered. Yes, we fail as Christian. Many times we mess up. I've been saved for 20, I've been saved for 13 years or no, 16 years now. I've been saved and I've been messed up so many times. But the song said, Down on my knees when sorrow rise, I will talk to Jesus. Down on my knees at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rose away. It was dear by faith. I receive my sight so I know who I am and I know whose I am and I can go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against thee. I know I'm no longer worthy to call thy son but make me one of thy highest servants. And he would say, come unto me. All who are labored and heavy laden. He said, I will polish it down. The potter will polish it down, mold you all over and make you into what he wanted. Is. Nothing wrong in making mistakes. Th that's what they, they fail to tell the people that when, when we get and they get saved. Nothing wrong in making mistakes. It's just like when you're running a race and you fall on, do you stay down or you get up back, brush off and run again? Because guess what? Your eyes must be on the price. People of God out there, unsaved. We are talking to the unsaved out there. Things may happen in your life that you said, can God cleanse this? Look at us now. We are no different from you. We are no special from you. Many of us know things that is unbearable. 
But guess what? We know a man that knows a man who is Christ Jesus. One day he saved us on the way to Damascus. And he said, you will no longer be called Saul, but you'll be called the apostle Paul. Hallelujah. And tonight, you too can be called an apostle, but you have to humble yourself. You have to surrender all to Jesus, all to him. You must freely give. Hallelujah. But first, you got, as our brother said, you got to confess your sin. You have to accept him as Lord and Savior. You have to say, God, I know that I am a sinner and I need to, unless you acknowledge that God is your supremo and he's the Lord of your life, then you will not get your virtue that you desire. You cannot want the blessing and don't want the blesser. It is not possible. The crack vessel cannot want the blesser, the healer, and don't want, the, want to be healed and don't want the healer. You have to accept the healer. And in order to accept the healer, you have to surrender all to him. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. My God, my God. Listen, somebody help me tonight. Help me tonight. Uh, glory to God. I want to bless, um, you know, Pastor Rodin. Glory to God from out of Florida. You know, we're going to have him back many more times ahead as we enter into our month of celebration in September. Uh, again, greetings to those of you who are in the room. I see Brampton is in the house and Kitson in the house. Uh, United States, Jamaica, uh, glory to God, Canada. Welcome, everyone. What a word. I mean, I mean, honestly, I, I don't even know what I'm going to say. Everything has been said, but I want to bring us, as I pose the question, what if it's turned around? What if God is did the cracking? He's in control. So it brings me and the woman of God got into what I wanted to say. The man of God touched on it, but it brings us to the word. And when we want to examine stuff, we go back to the word. So let's go to Job for a little bit. <clears throat> um, glory to God. Now, there was a certain day, and I'm just going to pick up. I'm not going to be long because we are not going to go past 9 o'clock. It's now 8.48. Uh, glory to God. Now, there was a certain day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came amongst them. Uh, glory to God. And the Lord said to Satan, where were you? No. Who, no, sorry. And the, Lord, and the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Ah, yes. Can God recommend you to be cracked? Yeah. Have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the earth. God was bragging about Job. Yes, showing off about him. Can God show off about you? Uh, glory to God. Can he brag about you? Uh, so he's saying all these things. He says, uh, there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Uh, yes, yeah, so Satan answered the Lord and said, hmm, does Job fear God for nothing? Oh, yeah, does Job really fear you? Now, come on, you're asking God. This is a God that knows everything. Listen to me, the way him brag about Job. You can't ask God if you know about if Job fear him. I brag about him. Can God brag about you? Can he recommend us to be cracked? Come on, let me tell you something. Uh, yes, yeah, so Satan answered the Lord and said, does God, does Job fear God for nothing. Have you not made an edge around him, hmm. around his household, around all that he has on every side? Uh, you have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased uh, in the land. Ha, huh? yes. So he's now telling God, listen, uh, you're the one that has done all this for Job. You're the one that's keeping him. You're the one that's protecting him. Uh, yes, you're the one that's sheltering him. Uh, but then he says, but now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. Uh, he's now asking God to stretch out his hand and touch everything uh, that Job has. He will surely curse you to your face. Uh, yeah, so now the enemy is bargaining uh, with God. You understand? That's what I'm doing now. <laughs> I'm trying to bargain with God now. That's how poor look at Job did that doing business. I know nothing no will happen. But God brag about him, boast about him because he knows Job. Ah, uh, yes. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, 
all that he has is in your is in your power mm -hmm. he says all that job has is in your power only do not lay a hand on his person uh, glory to god so satan went out from the presence of the lord and we know how the story goes he goes and he does what it's to do can god recommend you i want to encourage us tonight when god is in control when god has given permission when he is in control Oh, uh, yes, it's because he wants to get his glory out of you. Uh, glory to God. Every one of us will be tested and tried uh, to see how rooted and grounded we are in God. It is okay to be cracked. And because of time, I'm not going to stay long. We're going to pick it up another time. It is okay to be cracked. It's what we do while we are cracked that makes a difference. Uh, glory to God. Because a crack uh, reveals uh, more of God's light. Sometimes God, as a man of God said, he cracks us because it then reveals more. Uh, glory to God, of God's light, glory to God. Uh, there is tremendous value in a broken vessel. Let me tell you something. It's There is value in a broken vessel. It's unfortunate that when people see us cracked, they use us, they mistreat us, and uh, they say all oh, manner of evil about us, because guess what? They cannot see the value. They think because we're cracked, it brings down the value of the item. That's in the world system. Come on, somebody. Uh, if I were to go to um to home sense and i see a vessel and yes the vessel is nice but it's cracked uh, and it's for two thousand dollars i could go to the person says you know what i want this vessel but it's cracked you got to take off some money and they devalue it but guess what when you are cracked in the hand of god uh you cannot be devalued oh glory to god you are valuable even in the state of being cracked because god can still use you to shed his light don't devalue me. You know, you don't let, allow anybody to value you based on your crap. Don't allow anybody to value you based on your past. Don't let allow anybody to value you based on where you're coming from. Glory to God. As long as we're in the hand of God, as long as he is in control, it is for his glory. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord. Uh, glory to God. God made vessels. He made us, uh, yes, with an intention and with purpose. Uh, he didn't make us and then wonder what he's going to do with us. Uh, things come along our way to crack us and he is in control of it. Uh, some of those things, uh, glory to God. But it's for his glory. It's for his glory and it's for his use. Uh, glory to God. Uh, yes, yeah, so we just got to continue to trust him. We continue to stand upon his promises. We continue to be rooted and grounded on the godly uh, yeah, convictions that he's given us and watch him work it out. Uh, glory to God. One of the things that we have to realize, uh, yes, if we have a mug, a mug, a coffee mug was created, uh, yes, to hold coffee. If we are vessels and we are not doing that which we were purposed to do, we are dysfunctional. We are up, we're not operating as what we're supposed to do. Being cracked can cause us to be dysfunctional. But when you're cracked in the hands of the potter, again, there is a difference. We bless the name of the Lord. There is a difference. Uh, being cracked does not mean there is no purpose. Glory to God. Because remember, you know, do you think, oh, Jesus, Brother Rakeem, you said some stuff. Uh, you understand, man of God and sister, um, you said some stuff. Before we came to earth, before God decided to uh, place in your mother's womb, uh, glory to God, he already approved you. You understand? He approved you everything. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Glory to God. He knows that in the year 20, whatever, you were going to be cracked. But guess what? That didn't stop him from having purpose for you. That didn't stop him from approving the assignments. Uh, glory to God. That's why it's important that though crack, there's still purpose. Though crack, there is a destiny. Though crack, there's youth. It's man in his limited understanding will use, will put a crack vase at the curb our oh, glory to God and some old woman coming along now she sees this crack vase uh, you understand that the neighbor put out and she says wait a second oh uh, you know wow this is nice uh, glory to God oh, Jesus glory to God and she picks up this thing because guess what many of us were cracked and people put us to the curb I said that oh we cannot hold nothing uh, everything is leaking out we're messed up oh is that that just drug dealer Vivian uh, is that all junk 
don't call the Rakim and that lion, wow, whatever, that old deceiver, Michelle, oh, nothing good can, oh, let me put her to the curb. Guess what? You don't know the value, oh, glory to God. But this woman now comes along, oh, glory to God, and she sees this vessel. It looks beautiful on the outside, but she realizes that there's a crack, but she says, you know what? I still want it, oh, glory to God. And she takes up that vessel, my God, and she brings it inside and she polishes it and she puts it back together again. And now it is whole, ready for use, a showcase, glory to God. And this woman now uh, decides to have a garage sale. Hallelujah, Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. This woman now tries to have a, a garage sale. And guess what she does? She puts out all of her items and she gets her vase, glory to God, hallelujah. Do me have a vase, yeah? Uh, yes, she puts her vase out. Ah, uh, yes, uh, nice and put back together. Oh my God, that which was garbage, that which you threw out. Many of us was thrown out as garbage. Many of us was thrown out that like, you know what I, I don't have need for her anymore because guess what they used you before you were crap they believed in you when you were crap but the minute you crack you as you said minister you make some mistake it crack you uh you did a little fornication it crack you guess what now you're no longer a good vessel because them don't want it because he's a fornicator he's a liza team so they kick you out glory to god they put you to the curb but this a woman picked up this vase and she took it home and she polished it and she fixed where it was cracked now she She's having a garage sale and she says to herself hey I have a beautiful vase inside guess what I just see a neighbor now come our garage listen to my mom the same neighbor evangelist Michelle come at the garage seal glory to God and when she put out the veers oh my God the neighbors start look around and says wow my God I love this vase uh this vase is beautiful wow where did you get it from uh the way they disregard some of us that they don't even recognize oh my God when God you fix it up and put me back together again they can't believe that's Rakim as you said they can't believe that's Michelle as you said they can't believe because guess what they left you to dead they can't believe that any good could uh, can anything good come out of Nazareth can anything good come out of Vivian and they throw you off but here what happened the same person who put one who dashed you to the curve come to the garage sale Oh, hi. Um, oh, I love this vase. How much is this vase? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so the lady now looks at the vase and she says, hmm, uh, I don't know if you can afford this vase. Uh, yes, I don't know. I don't know if you can afford this vase. Uh, but no, I need this vase. I can use this vase. I can put this in this vase. Oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can afford it. And she says to the person, uh, give me three million dollars for it. We bless the name of the Lord, glory to God. And the owner now, the man now goes home and he gets his $3 million, uh, glory to God. And he purchased the vase. Listen, why? Because now he sees the value of it. Some people don't see the value of us until they see God to use us. And then they have a tenacity, some of them, to get jealous and, and envious and bitter. You had the crap vessel, but you couldn't see the value. You made pride blind your eye. You make arrogance blind you. You, make, you, you. you just make the enemy dull your vision. You couldn't see past the crap to know that God is seeping his light through that one. Don't throw that one out. Hold on to that one. Yes, I know she's rebellious. Yes, I know he's doing that but hold on i am the one that's lifted the i am the one that's in control but no cracked but still with purpose i want to encourage somebody tonight though you are cracked don't allow anybody to devalue you like the stores do don't let nobody put no mark down upon you my God, don't let nobody put you on mark down. Don't let nobody put no red tag on you. Don't let nobody put you in a clearance. Jesus, Holy Ghost, help me. You don't have no lot and part and no clearance rack. My God, don't let nobody put you on clearance rack. We bless the name of the Lord. Don't let nobody bag you up and send you to the thrift store. You are valuable. You're, you should be on the rack where the Louis Vuittons are, where the, all these things are. Don't, not because you're cracked, you are valuable in the hand of the God that we serve. Glory to God. 
We bless the name of the Lord. And that's what's happening uh, to most of us. Uh, glory to God. I'm speaking to somebody today. You are cracked. You were once this vase that was being used. Uh, people call you for preach. The Holy Ghost help me now because if I myself may I deliver tonight, may I deliver myself. People call you. And they call upon you, woman of God. But because they hear something about you and they call them here as surmise, sometimes not even the truth, but then use it and hammer you and crack you. And then say, oh, you're not you. Use. And then the why you did not call and have nothing to do. The devil is a liar. Crap, but with purpose. Crap with a destiny. Although crap, but anointed and gifted. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Crack, messed up, as one of the speakers said. We bless the Lord, but still with purpose. I'm encouraging somebody tonight as I encourage myself. Don't give up on yourself. Rise above it. Though you fall, you shall rise again. Uh, glory to God. This road, nobody told us that this road was going to be easy. Many of us have bumped and fall. Many of us have caused ourselves to be cracked, but yet still with purpose. Uh, glory to God. That person who you put to the curve that you thought would be no good, that vessel didn't have no use, but yet still, here is that vessel now. And because you're so covetous, you cannot even celebrate the vessel. Come on, somebody. I want to encourage somebody today that you are cracked. Whether it's God that did it or you did it, he's a merciful God. And one of the things I love about God, he specializes in broken people. Because broken people are humble people. When you are broken, uh, glory to God. When you realize that you could not have fixed yourself. Many of us are cracked when we try to fix ourselves. You flesh cannot fix flesh. We bless the name of the Lord. When we yield ourselves and we yield our vessels and we come honest before God, God loves honesty. So though you are cracked, though you've been talked about, though you've been ridiculed, though people say all oh, manner of evil about you, at times, uh, you know, you'd cry. I mean, I remember a time when, when somebody said to me, uh, you know, oh, you've been so, um, I want to use the exact word, I don't want to tell a lie. You've been so abused or something, you don't even know when somebody loves you. Let me tell you something, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I went home the night and I ball, I ball, I ball, I ball, I ball. My ball up my eye water, my ball. And God spoke to my heart concerning that because people can use their words to crack you. Because when they see a crack, instead of they heal the crack, they cause more damage. But look what God has done. Look at Brother Rakeem. Look at Pastor um, Andre. Look at Minister Shah. Look at me. Yes, look at me, look, look good. Many of us thought that the, the, the garbage truck pick us up because they don't hear from us for a while. The God of the dump heap until they look. You ever see some people and they say, my God, you know, I, you still around? Oh yes, I'm still around. You still doing that ministry? Oh yes, I'm still doing that ministry. Oh, you still going? Yes, I'm still going to the prison. You still preach? Yes, I'm still preaching. You still doing outreach? Yes, I'm still feeding the hungry and clothing the naked. Oh, yes, crap, but with purpose. Because guess what? Although you're cracked, when God reveals to you your purpose, it's what drives you, it's what motivates you. I want to encourage somebody tonight. Stand up tall with your cracked self, whether God do it or the enemy do it, because if the enemy do it, he can't fix it. If I him do it, he's in control. It's for his glory. We bless the name of the Lord. Don't allow anybody to devalue you. And the thing about it is now, 
uh, those of you who are listening, when you crack and God men you and you come into confidence with yourself, they now say, oh, you're too boastful and you're too prideful. Excuse me. It's not about being boastful. It's not about being prideful. It's because I come to know who I am in God. And some of them, because you're not crap no more and them can't manipulate you, them can't carry you grown like a puppet, then no one not have nothing to do with you. Some people don't mind if you remain crack. So hey, let me tell you something. You know, see, when you're crack, you have a lot of friends. You understand? Because guess what? Them can't walk down upon you. Them can't call you like a puppy dog. But the minute you get fixed, man, and you know yourself, and you put up your chest and fix yourself, hello, they don't want to have nothing to do with you. All of a sudden, they're not your friends. Because some people love when you're down. Some people don't mind if you're still in the pit. Some people don't mind if you crack up and never get fixed. Why? Because they know that the minute you get fixed and you realize who you are in God, devil, look out. Come on, somebody. Crack, but not broken. Crack with a purpose. Uh, glory to God. Crack so the light of God could seep out of you. Because uh, God works with broken people. If you are broken tonight, you qualify. You are qualified. Glory to God. As we talked about tonight, when you're cracked, it doesn't make sense you hide it. When you're cracked, you got to be true to yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Stop pretending to yourself. Look through the mirror of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost mirror revealed to you, you can't say lie, Mattel. Oh, glory to God. So I want to encourage somebody today as we are coming to the end of this month and real talk is going into their month of celebration. Uh, glory to God. I encourage somebody as I encourage myself. If I had believed and sat in the state of a cracked state, you understand, I would have never been in this position. I heard Brother Rakeem's story. When everybody give up on you and throw you to the curb, you better not give up on yourself. When everybody has left you, don't leave yourself. Crawl if you have to crawl. Weep if you have to weep. Go through the process. Oh, glory to God. Many of us want to be anointed as the man of God said, but can you go through the process to be anointed? I had to go to the crack state. I had to go to the rejection state. I had to go to all of this. It doesn't come it's easy. But when you know who you are in God, crap, but with a purpose, crap, but still anointed, crap, but still called by God, crap, but still available. Many of us who are cracked are more available than those who are not cracked. Many of us who are cracked are hearing from God more than those who are not cracked. Many of us have access to the throne more than some people who never crack. Because guess what? We know what it is to be bruised. We know what it is to be rejected. We know what it is to be cast out. So when God elevates us, you understand? Pride, we're not prideful because we remember our humble beginnings. Some people forget. Some people act like they're, they're, they cannot be cracked. They're just so out there. But let me tell you something. Those are the ones that you're hiding it. And that's why many persons are on their pinnacle and God is dealing with them because they didn't deal with the crack in the beginning. They lied their way to the top. They manipulated their way to the top. They disguised their way to the top. And the devil will fool you to make you look like you're saying thing. And when you reach up there, him see him wanna expose you. Lift up your skirt over your head, your whole bottom out a door. You don't even know. Come on, somebody. I saw a lady and I shared it one time She uh, on a program. She was a young and shepherd and she was walking nice and everything, good, nice. The poor lady didn't know, look like she went to the bathroom. Uh, you understand? And she never pulled on her dress properly. And she walked, think everything is good and nice and dandy. When you look, the wall are bottom, out of door, panty are sure. Never know. That's what happened to some of us who don't want to deal with it. You think everything going good and the whole of your buttocks out of door. Because you refuse to deal with it. It's now dealing with you. Glory to God. 
as the man of God said, and I'm just recapping on everybody, we're coming down. You know, he talked about, you know, when we come open and some of us are honest, they use it against us. But guess what? Use it against me, but it's going to be for God's glory. You can't use my crack state about me. You can't use my past against me because God dealt with it. The blood of Jesus dealt with it. Oh, glory to God. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, as far as the east is from the west. Glory to God. So the man of God talked about being used and, and some of us, we testify about our crack situation and instead of us, it, it, it's used against us. And that's why sometimes people don't want to testify. There's people, Minister Michelle, that want to talk about the crack, but they're afraid. They're afraid to be ridiculed. They're afraid to be looked down upon. They're afraid to be ostracized. So we have those people that we need to pray for, that they want to talk about it. They want God to deal with it. But the people that they're going to, they're afraid. Oh, glory to God. They're afraid. You should never be afraid or have to be afraid. Because we've all fallen short. We've all sinned. There's no righteous among us. All of us, every one of us have a little crack. Some of us only deal with it quicker than some. Some of us ignore it. Oh, glory to God. And you touched on it a bit. Some of people know that we're crap and then scandal with Jesus Christ. Them, trust me, may I tell you the truth, the amount of things you then do. May I tell you sometimes I just say, Father God, you know, I tell you the truth. Oh, Jesus, help me. But God in his midst extended his mercy. And that's why a person who take advantage of you when you're crap, then can't celebrate you. They can't. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. So we want to thank you tonight. And I'm going to ask Minister Mitch to pray us off. I thank you tonight for listening. I didn't really get into what I want to say. I kind of picked on everybody's point for another time. But I want to encourage somebody as I encourage myself. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. I am using this platform. And let me tell you something. Believe in yourself. Believe in the God who's called you. Believe in the God who's restored you. Believe in the God who showed you mercy. Even when you were in captivity because of your disobedience, God still look out for you. God still show you kindness. Oh, glory to God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endured forever. I want to encourage somebody. Sometimes I sit down and I look around and I say, God, what would I do if it wasn't for you? That's why it's so important. The Bible says, trust not the arm of flesh. Worse when you're cracked and fragile. Make sure you know who you're going to. Make sure you know who is counseling you. I heard somebody say, because instead of you, you getting fixed, I think it was Minister Mich Michelle, you come up more damaged, you come up more cracked, you come up more wounded. Oh my God. I encourage somebody tonight. Believe in who you are. Rise up and see yourself as how God has seen you. He's more than able, uh, yes, to put you back together again. The potter's wheel, the potter's house. The hand of God guides the clay. Oh, glory to God. And when the clay is getting on a hand on the potter's wheel, he uses one hand to guide it and another one to mold it. And then he pours another hand down because guess what? He needs to make room, uh, glory to God, for him to pour himself into us. That's all painful. But I want to encourage you tonight. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You're messed up tonight. You're cracked tonight. 
you're leaking all over the place, guess what? That which God has already purposed for you. They see, we don't understand that we do understand, but just to just say this, God, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He has finished your story. He has already approved you in, and he knows you're going to get messed up, but he approved you because guess what? He knows that he can fix you. Brother Rakim, or, or, or brother Andre, you think God ever knows when you say we're not going to go back and do what we're not going to do? You think you never know say, when me say God kill my flesh, you know say, um, when me done, me still like go to my house. Till him have to put on one song for me fly up off of the bed. God is watching you. He knew that was going to happen. But that did that change his mind about me? No, it didn't. Oh, glory to God, somebody. You might have went out of your way and you got pregnant and this and that. Does that change God's mind towards you? No, he already made the provision. The blood speaks when he said it was finished. I mean, everything was taken care of. Past, present, and future mistakes. Does that mean we continue to sin? No, God forbid to be so. There must be a time that we grow into maturity. But everybody comes into that maturity at different stages. Don't kill me because you get to that stage before me. Don't kill me. And the thing that I don't like, you were cracked with something and because God fixed you, you have no compassion on the person who was cracked with the same thing as you. You never remember when you did crack? You never remember when you don't sleep around. You never remember when you don't take people, man. You never remember when you don't smoke. You never remember when you don't shoplift and thief and lie and wicked. And God fix you. And because your ears and a sister now is a fornicate and a liar. You have round table talk. Come on, somebody. Where is your mercy? God extended mercy to you. What happened to your mercy? And you were once there. Come on, somebody. Roll back the curtains of memories now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where it could have been. Glory to God. This is not the season for us to be gloating because we think we have arrived. Take heed. Least you think you stand, you fall like a umpty dumpty. Trust me. Let us appreciate each other with cracks and all. Oh, glory to God. Some of us are dealing with some people that are cracked. We might need more patience, more temperance, long suffering, gentleness, self-control to deal with some crap people. The fruit of the spirit must be evident in our lives. Don't abuse them. Don't misuse them. Don't devalue them until you know the love of God that reaches down to fallen man. You know nothing, nothing at all until you know the love of God because you have no right to put value on anyone. We have no right to put value on anyone or devalue anyone or put anybody on clearance. A red tag sale. No. Because even though we're cracked, that prostitute is valuable. That drunkard is valuable. That rapist is valuable. Sitting in a dark place, cracked, but valuable. Lost. Your daughter is lost. Your son is lost to pornography, but he's valuable. Your husband might be lost to gambling, but he's valuable. He's in a dark place right now. Don't give up. Glory to God. We give God praise tonight. 
and we give him glory tonight and we give him honor. Father God, we thank you that although we're cracked, yes, you are God that works with broken pieces. Michelle is going to pray right now, but before she does, I just want to say this one thing to us. Glory to God. That God did not create us to be a decoration, but to contain something valuable. And that's why it's important that we allow him to do the fixing. Oh, glory to God. Many of us have been put down as a decoration. Wives have been put down as decorations. Husband has been put down as decorations. When it ought not to be so, we were created to contain something valuable. Everyone is a little cracked. Oh, glory to God. The only difference is some fractures go deep and damage the soul. And I'll pick up on that next time. Some of the fractions, they go so deep that it damages the soul. My God, I'm going to say it again. All of us are a little cracked, but some of us, it's so damaging. It goes so deep and it damages the soul. But I want to say this to somebody. He is the restorer of your soul. Glory to God, yes. He can restore that damaged soul. We bless the name of the Lord. Uh, Minister Michelle, I just want to thank all of you for listening, for staying, for your comments. Minister Michelle, close us off in prayer. I want you to pray for those who are, uh, Minister Michelle, who want to come out, but they're ashamed to come out because they feel like they'll be judged if they talk about the crack. Uh, yes, and also, before you close off, pray for Minister Mary, uh, you know, a minister colleague of ours. Uh, glory to God, a powerful woman of God, uh, the founder of building, um, of, of rebuilding lives. She lost her sister, uh, you know, so we are going to be praying for the entire family. Uh, it doesn't matter how you prepare yourself. I don't know the circumstance around it, but I know that this family is grieving and she's part of us. She's a, a colleague, a, a laborer uh, in the mission field, in the, in the harvest field. So we want to lift up this woman of God. Uh, I see where she's canceled all her programs for this week. And I'm usually on uh, Wednesdays with her. Uh, glory to God. So we just lift up. So Michelle, you'll do that prayer as well. And then I'll just do the benediction. Go ahead, woman of God. Um, before I go into prayer, my final words of encouragement is when you are good and you are not cracked, everybody knows your worth. But when you become cracked, they cast you out. Another's garbage is another's treasure. To the world, your cracks are garbage. There is no use for them. But to Jesus, your cracked vessel is a treasure. Like Minister Nash was elaborating, sometimes when they think that the girl be chopped down with you, they ain't know that you're in the potter's house. You are being fixed. You are being mended. You are being patched up. You are being put back together again. So when God recycle you, then they will want you. Almighty God, we give you praise tonight. For you are King of Kings and you are Lord of Lords. Father God, you said in your word that we are to weep with those who are weeping and to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. So God, tonight, we lift up Minister Phillips before you. God, we know right now she has a loss. And I know it is a big loss. But Father God, your word declares that blessed are those that mourn for they shall be comforted. God, right now, I call forth your Holy Spirit to comfort her at this time. God, I pray for our family, oh God, that this loss, it will not cause division, but it will cause unity. God, it will bring forth your word into manifestation for this family, oh God. 
May this loss, oh God, it will not turn backs on you, God, but it will bring them to you. It will draw them to you. Your words are drawn nigh to God. Father God, I decree and I declare over their lives right now that they will draw nigh to you, oh God. God, that you will uplift Minister Philip. You will uphold her in the name of Jesus. God, she will not be discouraged, but Father God, you will give her the oil of joy in this time of mourning. In the name of Jesus, God, only you know what they are feeling. God, only you understand right now why they have this loss. But God, I pray in the name of Jesus. And in this time of loss, oh God, it will cause them, oh God, to be knitted together closely as a family. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I decree and I declare that as Minister Philip, as she is a woman of God, as you have chosen in this end time, God, that in her family, she will stand out. There will be a breakthrough in this time of loss. There will be a fixing. There will be a mending right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray, oh God, that your spirit will continue to minister her, will restore her at this time, will comfort her, will love upon her and her family. God, continue to do your work in their family, oh God. Continue, oh God, to keep them, strengthen them, God. Settle them, establish them, oh God. For you say, after they have suffered a while, God, your word never said what kind of suffering. So they are suffering right now. God, strengthen, establish, settle them, God, as you promise in your word, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, as we have come forth in this word, as we have run with this word, oh God, that Pastor Letla and the team brought forth, cracked, but not broken. Father God, I bring every lost soul to you, oh God. Every soul that was like me, oh God. If I have to be that testimony, if I have to be that example, oh God, to tear back the veil, to bring forth souls to your kingdom, God, so be it in the name of Jesus. For your word declares, oh God, it is not the whole that need a physician, but the sick, oh God, the cracked ones, the messed up ones, the addicted ones. God, I bring them before you right now that they have no shame in bringing forth their testimony. God, when they bring forth their testimony, if anyone who think that they are bad, they will run with it. God, you will deal with them in the name of Jesus. Father God, we know many are cracked and they are looking for their freedom. They want their deliverance. They want their liberty. They want their healing, God. But there are people, oh God, who, oh God, will cause them to be afraid. God, I pray right now that after tonight, their testimonies, they will bring them forth in the name of Jesus. For Father God, your words, oh God, that they overcame by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. And I decree and I declare that the blood of the Lamb already prayed that price on Calvary that gave them the freedom, that liberty to speak their testimony so that they will reach a soul that rightly need it. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch them right now. God, that you will flush them. Let your spirit speak to them. Let your spirit over them in the name of Jesus. Father God, let there be a quick dinner that their testimonies they will speak for their testimonies and allow you to do what you need to do oh God in their lives and do what you need to do to every gossiper every busybody every naysayer who likes to run with things when they hear it God I pray tonight oh God touch those lost souls touch them God and God I pray for us as Believe us to, oh God. Father God, some of us, we have cracked by you, oh God. We are cracked from things we don't know of. We are cracked from family generational things. We are cracked from lifestyles. We are cracked from habits in the name of Jesus. But your word declares that all have fallen short of the glory of God. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus that our falling short, our cracks, oh God, we will be not hindered. Like the man of God said, 
our crops, they are our blessings, our crops, they are our testimonies, our crops, it is a manifestation that God is still God and he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all uh, that we can act uh, or think uh, according to the power god that power is coming before you uh, exposing ourselves nakedly and say god uh, i am cracked uh, this is my cracking uh, god uh, my mouth uh, god uh, drinking uh, god uh, gossiping god unforgiveness whatever my crack is god i come before you in humility oh god turn your face away from my cracks and blot out my transgressions god blot out them cracks that you have not created in me oh god god i pray in the name of jesus that every believer that you will bring them oh god put them back on the potter's wheel so that you can do what you need to do in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray, oh God, that even some of us with our cracks, we may have been rejected, we have been pushed aside, we have been cast out. But Father God, your word declares, it said, the stone, the stone, the crack ones that the builder rejected will become the head cornerstone. They can only become the head cornerstone when you do your work, when they surrender all to you, when they yield to your ways, when they yield to your will, when they allow your Holy Spirit to do its work, when they allow the Holy Spirit to empower, when they allow the Holy Spirit to fill them, when they allow the Holy Spirit to teach, when they allow the Holy Spirit to guide, when they allow the Holy Spirit to do its work so the fruits can be manifested, then and only then will the world understand and know that we have been with God, we have been on the potter's wheel, and he recreated, he made us new, he caused a beginning, a new beginning, in the name of Jesus, and Father God, help us, we as a people, we like to look to others to help us, and God, even though you say we are our brother's keeper, God, some of us, we like to take your work into your hands, but God, may we be reminded tonight uh, that the arms of flesh uh, will fail us. Uh, we are only to trust you. Uh, God, our loyalty is in you, oh God. Uh, for you are a man. Uh, you are truthful. Uh, you are honest. Uh, you are merciful. Uh, and you are forgiving. Uh, Father God, tonight, oh God. Uh, Help us not to put our confidence in kings and in princes, nor in the things, nor in horses, nor in chariots. But God, help us to put our trust in you tonight in the name of Jesus. Father God, we are cracked, but we know in your word, you did not come to call the righteous, but you come to call sinners. You come to call the cracked one to repentance. Those who can admit, Lord, I have sinned. Lord, I am cracked before you. I have done some things that I should not have done. Lord, I am cracked before you. I have disobeyed in the name of Jesus. Please forgive me. Have mercy upon me, oh God. And I promise God, because the word of God says, it's better to vow and pay than to vow and not pay. So God, tonight, as we vow to you, oh God, when we bring our crops, we leave them to you. Do what you need to do, oh God. Father God, we are not worthless, but we are worth it. We are valuable. We are important in the name of Jesus. Father God, teach us to be like Job, that we are loyal to you, oh God. Even you caused him to become cracked. He never gave up on you. And God, there was some people, crack people placed around him to try to open up more cracks, but he never gave in. God, give us the faith like Job. Give us the loyalty like Job. Give us the heart like Job to stand upon your promises. He says, though they slay me, though I am cracked, yet will I trust him like David. When they were planning to stone him, yeah, he said, I encourage myself in the Lord. Father God, sometimes we have some cracks and we can say, yeah, though I walk to the 
body here. Of the shadow of death. It feel like death. It look like death. But it is not death. It is our cracking point. He said, I will fear no evil. Lord, for you are with us. Your rod and your staff. God, we are cracker. You will chastise. When you have to chastise, we are cracker. You will heal when you are supposed to heal. And you will deliver when you are to deliver. But we got to go through our processing. We got to remain faithful. We got to stand on Christ, uh, the solid rock. Uh, and Father God, uh, when we are going through our cracking, uh, our cracking by you, uh, our own cracking that we created, oh God. Father God, uh, help us not to be double-minded, oh God. Uh, but help us, oh God, uh, to have our mind uh, in oneness. Uh, our spirit in oneness, our body in oneness, for we cannot do anything for ourselves. We can't do anything in our own strength. We can't do anything without the spirit of God. Your word said not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. So tonight, God, we are a cracked people. We are a wretched people. God, we are a people, oh God, uh, whose sins uh, are ever before thee. Uh, but we thank you for your grace. Uh, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Uh, we thank you for that slain lamb uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and God, tonight, uh, we put our cracks in your hands. Uh, and God, crack us uh, when you want to crack us. Uh, so we will understand uh, that we belong to you. Uh, that we will understand uh, that you are God. Uh, that we will understand uh, that if we get too puffed up, uh, you will have to bring us down. Uh, for your word declares uh, that any man who thinks to himself, uh, he is something when he is nothing. Uh, he only fooling himself. Uh, and God tonight, uh, I pray in the name of Jesus uh, that our cracks uh, will bring us to a place of humility. It will bring us to a place to our knees. Uh, will bring us to a place where we worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, will bring us to a place. Uh, where we will constantly pray uh, to develop a relationship uh, with your Holy Spirit. Uh, for we'll never understand uh, your heart uh, except your spirit uh, revealed to us. Uh. So, Father God, uh, be in the midst of us tonight. Uh. Let your will be done in us in the name of Jesus. Uh. Father God, we thank you, O oh God. Uh, and we give you praise. Uh. We give you glory. And we give you honor. Father God, honor our praise tonight. God, I declare and I declare yeah. that no more shall the Prince of Persia hinder our prayers, but you will send forth the angel, oh God, my God, your war force angel to yeah. stand in our midst so that our prayers will come to your throne room. Yeah. God, we thank you for answering our prayers. And yeah. even if you don't answer them, yeah. we give you praise and we give you glory because you will answer them when you need to answer them. You don't move on man's timing. For Father God, we thank you. God, we call and we claim and we command this praise to be so in no other name but the mighty and all-powerful matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Yes, you know, Lord. glory to God, we are coming down. We're going to go, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be disobedient to the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, Pastor Andre, I'm going to ask you for two minutes. It's really on my spirit. I want you to pray for those of us who are listening. I want you to pray for our sons. I want you to pray for our sons. I want you to pray for the son, young men. Uh, you know, those of you who are listening, who you have a son that's not saved, you have a nephew, a brother. I need you to pray for our male. Uh, you know, just pray. I don't want to be disobedient. I want to really, um, you know, just I, I'm led by the Spirit to ask you to do that. Pray for our male, the son. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah! 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 Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we stand in your presence once again, God. He said, oh God, young man, I call upon you because you are strong. Holy divine healer, God will present the male aspect, oh God, the male gender right now in the name of just every son, every nephew, every uncle, hallelujah, every father, father, holy ghost of God will present them into your hand, God, you know them by name and by number, right now you see in the world where the male gender is falling out, father, but God, just like Job, God, we wanted to put an edge around every son in the mighty name of Jesus, 
touch them, God. Touch their mind, God. You see where the devil want to save them like we, God. You see where the devil want to take our, them out of this world, God. They know they are the men and women of tomorrow, God. You know they are the lion of tribe of Judah, God. You place them as the men, Father. But, oh God, we pray that, oh God, wisdom will grant it unto them, Father. We pray that, oh God, whoever, whatever jokes they want to be upon, God, right now, God. Whatever situation they want to in right now, I pray that you will send your angel to encamp it around them, Father. You said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them. Now, when you say little children, God, you are speaking to all ages of men, Father. You said to suffer them to come unto me. Father, in the name of Jesus, is pointed unto me to pray for them, Father. I know it is finished from the moment, God, you put it in your servant mind, it is finished. And Father, we just want to thank you for doing it. We want to thank you, God. Bring them for those who are going to college, those who are seeking college degree, Father. Holy Ghost, I pray that they will be the head and not the tail. Holy Ghost of God, I pray that you will continue to cover them if they are sick in their body right now. Oh God, in their mind right now, Father, we bring forth healing, God, and we receive healing, God. Touch them with the nail scars, hand, Father. In the name of Jesus right now, God, I pray for every man from the zero to a hundred right now, Father. Holy Ghost, take full control of all your boys, God. Mighty God of Daniel, speak to them, O oh God. Give them role model, Father, who will teach them, O oh God. Some of them, Father, have leave them, Father. But God, and they don't know where to turn, God, but we know that you are God who will place the right role model, Father, in their life, Father, that they can see someone to look upon. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak life over their life. We speak health over their health. We speak, oh God, prosperity in their life, Father. Knowledge will increase, God. Wisdom will increase. Solomon, you have gained wisdom. So we are claiming wisdom for our young men, oh God. Right now, we are going, we're going back to school. Those who are online school, God, I pray for vision of focus. We pray that their vision will be focused on their work, their school work, Father. Mighty name, let them know that it is only education can bring them out of this situation of poverty, Father. Holy Ghost, we know that you are will help them too, God, but they have to stand their ground fast. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we ask it done and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So God be the glory. Great things he has done. We want to give him thanks. My God. Uh, one of the things I just want to thank those of you who stuck around. You know, many persons might say, well, you guys have been on for a long time, but I remember the days when we used to go to dance. You understand? We spent hours, hours, hours. But it's funny. We don't want to spend hours in God's presence. Uh, we just can't. We just, uh, you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, so I just want to thank those of you who stuck around. We prayed for your sons, uh, your husbands, and all of that. Uh, I just want to thank those who are on the panel tonight. What a night, uh, glory to God. I'm telling you, you don't want, you want to go back and listen to this. Uh, when you're speaking, you tend to can't hear yourself. When you sit back and listen uh, as if you weren't even speaking, you'll be so blessed. I was so blessed and encouraged, and I'm looking forward to going and listen on the replay myself. Uh, glory to God. So again, we want to thank all our viewers. Uh, those of you who are viewing from the Brampton area, I see you in the room. Uh, uh, those of you down in St. Kitts in the United States, Jamaica, uh, yes, was in the room as well. Uh, glory to God. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, again, I want to thank, um, you know, Minister Andre. I'm hoping it's not going to be his last as we're in a full month of celebration. I might call upon you one of the nights. Uh, yes, just to join us and to celebrate with us, uh, you know, uh, three years on this platform. It has not been easy. Uh, you know what I'm seeing? Lots of days. I just thought I'd just throw in the towel, but but, uh, you know, when destiny and purpose is calling, you got to rise above, uh, you know, so I, I just want to thank God for that. So, again, those of you who are with us, thank you so much. Please listen out for our announcements going forward. Uh, yes, as you heard, Minister Mitch, she is on our tickets. Uh, yes, for women on the front line, trust me, under the theme, walking in the Holy Spirit. Uh, glory to God. That's around the ending of September. On Wednesday, though, as we kick off our month of celebration, uh, 
we're starting with Rise and Shine with um, our co-host for Health Watch, Minister Timika Jackson. She'll be on. And then Wednesday evening, our first program as we kick off uh, will be with Renee Campbell. You want to listen out to that. Uh, so join us. You know what? Uh, celebrate with us. You understand? We have to learn to celebrate each other's achievements. Uh, it's not about competing or whatever. It's just celebrating what God has been doing through us. And then you'll hear more about from me uh, as we go on. So again, uh, September the 11th is my birthday. Uh, yes, so I don't know if we're going to go live that day. I might do that. Uh, hopefully, maybe somebody will surprise me on that day. Uh, so September the 11th will be my birthday. Again, um, I don't know what I'm going to do that day, but whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to include the whole world in it. Uh, so again, you will be invited uh, to my birthday celebration on that day. So you will join me. Uh, you know, on that, thanking God for uh, keeping me yet another year. All right. So wherever you are around the world, remember, you have the heart of a champion. You have the mind of an overcomer. And you have the spirit of more than a conqueror. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Remember, Minister Mitch is saying it. Everybody's supposed to know this by now. <laughs> Ah, yes, remember, you are a lit candle. Go out and light your world. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto the entire world. Good night from Toronto. Good night from St. Kitts. And good night from Florida. Good night to the world.